Hey everyone, this is Yume. This is my first time making a voiceover tutorial, so please bear with me if I make any mistakes. I'm rather camera shy, so I'm pretty nervous right now. So this will be a tutorial of my painting called Our Blue Planet, and in this tutorial I'll be going over some basics on composition, color choice, and some techniques that I use as shortcuts. And then I'll also provide a free download of the fish brushes that you see I used in part of the tutorial. Uh, those will be available for free to download on my website. And I want to thank everyone on Patreon who supported me and made this tutorial possible and free for everybody. Thank you all so much. I start out by doing some research on how the water and refraction should look like in a shallow ocean and I do that just by using Google image to get some references. Once I have a good understanding from the references, I sketch out a rough composition. To create a feeling of depth in the water, um, basically the water that's further away from you is darker since less light passes through it and get to your eyes by the time you see it. And then for the part that divides the water from the surface, uh, it's very close to you at a perspective and angle. So you want dark and white lines or very dark and light lines uh, very close to each other. That way it shows that the perspective is um, <laughs> I don't know what the word is for it, but the perspective is very close to you. And to create the illusion of shallow water, you want to highlight the foreground. So think of how the light comes through the water and it hits the sand and the ocean floor that's close to you and it will reflect the light, hence making it lighter. And now on a new layer, I'm testing out different brushes that can mimic the refraction texture and patterns of the water that creates on the ocean floor. And I'm testing out different ones in paint to side because I have never actually used these before. Um, and it doesn't matter what program you use, Photoshop has similar brushes that you can use. Um, once you find a brush that you like, um, I just kind of put it flatly everywhere and it doesn't really matter. And then I use the transform tool and that's control T to tr uh, transform the texture. And then you can hold the control key while dragging one of the corners. And that's a quick shortcut to give these textures a sense of perspective without having to draw it out. And this is a cool trick that I like to use in a lot of places. And then to really bring out the highlights, I change the layer to shine. And this allows all the colors to really pop out. And sometimes a little bit too much along the edges, so I go back and er erase some of the uh, parts that are too bright. Then I repeat the process all over again with a slightly different texture just to give you some extra dimensions to create that different water refracting on top of each other. And sometimes textures just aren't quite enough so I also like to paint in some additional details here and there uh, depending on what looks good. So in this case I decided to add a bit more highlight in certain areas, especially closer to the viewer, um, to give it more of that uh, depth. Then a uh, new layer I sketch in the figure, um, and it's important to do this on a new layer so you can easily adjust the pose, composition, and location. And once I'm happy with the rough composition, I start to blot in the colors. And this is just some very rough, solid colors to get a general idea of what I'm looking for. And also, I make sure to do this on a different layer as well. I generally uh, put the color layer underneath the line art layer. 
Then on a new layer set to multiply, I paint in the shadows and multiply just allows things to get darker uh, while keeping some of the details beneath it. And adding this shadow creates additional sense of shallowness of the ocean. Uh, first we added the highlights and the refractions, but the shadows also makes it seem like she's floating just above the bottom of the ocean and not too far off. Before I move on to any other details, I painting a rough composition of the clouds. Then right above the layer with the solid color for the woman, um, I make a new layer and set it to multiply. This time I also check the box that says a clipping group which is the same thing as clipping mask in Photoshop. Uh, by checking that and then painting on this layer, it lets me basically not paint outside of where there isn't any color blocks. So you can see that the shading that I'm adding only goes onto the parts of the colors and not any of the backgrounds. The other thing is by using multiply, I can add shadow to the whole thing regardless of what color is underneath, be it the white dress or the skin. Um, I don't have to pick a darker color for the white or a darker version of the skin color. Uh, the multiply just lets me add the same amount of shadow color to the whole thing. Then on a new layer, I test out some different brushes for the dress that's flowing the water. I wanted something very light and wispy feeling, almost like a jellyfish. Uh, so you can see me trying out different brushes, seeing what I like, what I don't like, and erasing what I don't like. Um, people shouldn't be afraid of trying different things, because especially with digital art, if you don't like it, you can just control Z. Then it's just painting in more and more details until you're happy with it. Um, there's really no good way to see when it's just right. It's just get a feeling for it. Um, now I like to take the colors from the surroundings. So here I'm taking some of the blue from the sky because usually you get some reflection of the highlights and shadows from the surroundings. Um, so you can see some of the blue of the ocean in the shadows and shadings of her legs, her dress, and then highlights will be taken also from the highlights in the environment. Now it feels like something's not quite right in that the amount of highlights and shadows is about the same above and below the water and it really should be shadier under the water because the water actually absorbs a lot of light. So using the same technique I did before I make a new layer, set it to multiply, turn on uh, the clipping and then I add some shadows to it the whole entire bottom half of her dress and body. And then I try out different colors. Instead of just a gray shadow, she, since she's underwater, the shadow is much bluer. And since she is underwater, it can't just be shadows. There has to be some refraction of light as well. So I also add in some highlights. Well, I'm mostly happy with how the bottom half is I start working on the top half using the same techniques. Just trying out different brushes, painting colors, adding details. You want to keep in mind the light source so that it's uh, consistent. So here the lighting's coming from somewhere above and in front of her. So there's more shadows uh, on her back, but it's not completely in front of her. So there's some coming from above as well. And then as for uh, knowing where to add the shadows and the highlights, you need to study some human anatomy and that's something you just have to draw and practice to get the hang of. You can also use references, which is always good um, for getting the hang of things and learning where things should go. Now I'm just going back to add more details to the water 
more highlights, more shadows, and uh, making the area further away a bit darker to give it even more depth. And then for the areas closer to you, uh, notice I'm adding the light and dark strokes uh, very sharply. They, they're not really blurred. This creates the extra sense of um, the water being at a great perspective. Well, I'm happy with the water, I start working on the clouds and usually I just use a plain brush to blot in the general shape and colors. But after that, when it comes to the details, instead of painting in every tiny wisp and detail of the clouds, I like to use texture brushes. And in paint to side and Photoshop, you can both make special brushes that simulate clouds. Um, I actually made a set of Photoshop brushes for painting clouds and they're free to download as well on my website. Um, here I'm using it inside though. Uh, and you can see I'm just putting in different shadows, colors, highlights, and using the texture brush creates it very quickly without me having to painting the tiny parts. When I'm done with the general environment, I paint in the fish and the whale and again I'm just blotting in the general shape and composition, some rough colors. Not really going into the details, but enough details to get a sense of the flow and how I want things. I adjust the image as I go along, adding extra shading or highlights where I feel like and changing the color, sometimes using overlay. For the composition of the fish and whale, I wanted to make sure that they make sense and add to the picture. So here the fish is swirling towards her and around her legs, and the ones that are much closer to the viewer, they're much bigger, and then as they turn away and get close to her legs, they're much further away and smaller. And same with the whale, it's in the distance jumping out of the clouds uh, but forming sort of a circle with the rest of the fish in a way that flows. Then once I'm happy with the general composition, I paint in some of the details uh, as usual, highlights, shadows. I generally just use a plain round brush because it's very simple and whales don't really have any specific textures at such distance. Um, and I actually decided to get rid of the two smaller whales because they weren't really adding that much to the picture and it was kind of distracting and ruining the composition. Sometimes less is more. Uh, too many things in image might make it too busy. If the eye doesn't know where to look and there's no focus, then the picture feels just kind of not very comprehensive. I also add in some cloud splashes on the whale's fins so it looks like it's jumping out of the clouds. And after that, I work on some of the fish I painted, giving it more details, shading, highlights, shadows, all using the same techniques I mentioned before, such as uh, clipping layers and um, opacity layer lock using multiply and other different layer styles to create shadows and highlights. I usually do most of my painting in paint tool side because it's a simple program with easy to control brushes that I really like working with, but there are some special brushes that's only available in Photoshop and one example is the fish brush I made. Uh, using the fish brush, I can quickly paint out many, many fishes that follow the uh, direction of the brush stroke, and that can save you a lot of time from painting all the tiny fish. Um, sometimes I like to paint out the individual fish because they're more detailed and unique, and they're not just copies of the same fish. But for some of the smaller fish in the distance, or sometimes you just need to have a lot of fish but don't want to spend time painting so many. The Photoshop fish brushes is a really great alternative and those will be free to download on my website. I like to use several different types of fish brushes 
to show the different species of fish in the ocean and I make sure to do them on different layers so that I can edit them individually and also create a good sense of depth uh, different fish in front of the other fish uh, blocking the fishes behind it uh, there are downsides to the fish brushes in that they come out just a solid color it's not really a stamp so you can't stamp out any details with highlights or shadows one way around that is to use photoshop's layer style and then in the layer style you can instantly add shadows and highlights into all the fishes in one direction granted the this technique doesn't produce the best looking fishes uh, they are a bit boring and repetitive looking so that's why i also like to paint in a few individual fish uh, that way when all put together you kind of your eyes focus more on the individually painted fishes in the foreground and not so much on the tiny duplicated fishes in the background while well, I'm happy with the fishes and the details, uh, I decided to give them a more sense of a movement by adding a blur. And the blur I'm using is called Path Blur, which is perfect for this. Uh, what basically happens is you go and you uh, create this path in Photoshop and it basically just blurs uh, following the path you have made. Lastly, I like to just try out some different filters and color adjustments to see if I end up liking those versions more than the original. For example, uh, sometimes I use the lighting effect under render to give it more of a a focus to the center of the image where it's highlighted while it's darker on the borders or I like to use color balance under image adjustments and there I usually make the shadows more blue and the highlights more yellow or red sometimes I end up liking the colors of one version but only in one area so I would uh, erase the areas that I don't like and keep the areas that I do like and that way I can easily adjust colors in different parts of the image and now we're almost done just want to painting some extra details here and there that I might have missed before and then adjusting the colors a bit more here and there until I'm happier with it uh, sometimes you don't really know what you want right away because you've been staring at the same image for too long so it's good to take a break and come back to it a few hours later or even the next day and we're done thank you so much for watching my first voiceover tutorial please let me know in the comments how i can improve for future tutorials and if you like seeing these tutorials please support me on patreon i post a lot of content on there as well as uh, lots of video processes that just can't be turned into tutorials because I don't have time. And as patrons, you can vote once a month on which of the many video processes that gets made into a tutorial. Thank you all again, and I look forward to sharing more of my drawing techniques with everyone.